hi guys welcome to my channel thank you so much for taking time out to spend time with me today i'm so excited to have you all here if you haven't subscribed please subscribe you can subscribe button please 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 thank you so you can be notified when i have a new video when i go live so yeah please subscribe and so that my engagement can increase <laughs> please subscribe please please seriously seriously thank you <laughs> so today i want to talk about um, so you are in love with potential also you are in love with mr potential for those of you who may not know mr potential is a person who has dreams or visions but has not really seen them come to pass so if you're dating maybe um somebody who dreams of becoming um a world-class politician or who wants to run a big business and is just starting out or somebody who has um has a call to ministry or just starting out just someone who has not really made it in the sense of making it as people define making it yes yeah, i'm saying yes so if you're dating mr potential this is my charge to you i dated married potential in fact in many ways i'm still with potential because i know my husband has not reach the climax of all that god will have him be or do but he was more potential then when we were dating than he is now not that he had more potential then but he was just more of what somebody would call mr potential i think that's better when we first started dating than now just that of course he still has a long way to go with all that god has called him to do but so Dating Mr. Potential. Let me get back to this. Why is I talking about my husband? I always get distracted when I start talking about my husband. So this is for you if you are dating. Let me go through my notes to be on the... Yeah. So this is for you if you are dating Potential. So when we first started dating, people would ask me, who are you dating? And I would say, oh, well, he's a pastor. I would be like, okay, pastor of where? And then our church is now called Celebration Church. You can check us out, Celebration Church NG on youtube here or on our website crng.org but then our church was called life triumphal church which is very difficult to pronounce and if you hear a word like celebration church it, it sounds familiar because it's a simple word but then it was life triumphal church and i say life triumphal i'll be like where and then we were in one unknown part of town called ikotsum in lagos and i say ikotsum and then time we moved to ikeja after being in ikotsum for a while i'll be like ah ah is he his church and i mean nobody owns the church god is the owner of the church but he's, he say, is he the owner is he the leader of the church i say yes like, ah, ah. now wow now what in nigerian palace means there's a lot i want to say but it might sound rude so i'm not going to say it i will just say now ah. <laughs> that's what it means so many times you're dating somebody who you know has the capacity to be successful and it's really already successful in your eyes. Do you understand? But it can be very difficult convincing parents. Although it wasn't difficult convincing my friends because my friends are just awesome. But convincing people that this guy is worth your time. Do you get? So if you're dating potential, this is for you. Do you understand? If you're dating potential, this is for you. So the first thing I want to tell you is that you must love this guy beyond the potential. You must be able to see in him qualities you would admire in his spouse beyond the potential. Let me, in fact, when I first wrote this, because it was originally a blog post, when I first wrote it, wrote it the movie Acrimony had not yet come out. If you have seen Acrimony, you understand where I'm coming from. In Acrimony, this lady sees this guy who has this wonderful invention, but as the years go by, she supports him with all the money she has. But the invention doesn't see the light of day and she's tired and frustrated because she's about to lose her house that her mother had gifted to her because of this guy so last minute she ends the relationship with the guy because she's like first of all you're an ex-convict second this dream of yours never came to pass all the things you promised me you couldn't do them and she ends the relationship and shortly after ending the marriage the guy now actually becomes successful or he now blows like they say in nigerian parlance and there's a whole other story there. But what I'm saying now is that you must love this guy beyond potential. I believe, I strongly believe that my husband is going to take the, the word of God to millions and billions of people around the world. But even if for any reason, and by God's grace, we do have a growing ministry. But even if for any reason we were just pastoring 50 or 20 people, 
I would still have honor and respect for him because what attracts me to him is not what I think he has the capacity to achieve, but the kind of man that he is. He's a man who loves the Lord. He's a man who is very bright. He's a man who is teachable. He's a man who gives his best to whatever he's doing. He's a man who is committed to me. So if your love for this guy is only based on he wants to be the first president of Nigeria, what if he never becomes the first president? What if he eventually says, you know what, I don't even feel equal to politics anymore. I think I'm always going to be a teacher. Would you still love him? So you must love this guy more than you love his dream. You must love him more than you love his vision. There's another movie I saw where um, it, was, it was also an African-American movie as well. I can't even remember the name. Where um, they had these big dreams from high school. The guy was going to play football. American football, the lady was going to support him and be a wag and they're just going to have a fun time. But for some reason, the guy um, had an accident and couldn't be a pro ball player anymore. And the love waned. So if you're loving this person because of the dreams that they hope to achieve, not even in a selfish way, but just having a back of your mind that, ah, this guy is so passionate about Nigeria, he's so passionate about sports, he's so passionate about... If you're loving him because of the dream... What happens if that dream is not fulfilled? Or what happens if the dream takes a very long time to get fulfilled? So if you're loving me, if you're if you're loving on Mr. Potential, you must love him beyond the potential. That is so important. So important to love him beyond the potential because it's either he may change his mind about the things that interest him, or it may take a longer time. So you must ha- have a guy who's who at the core has Christ as his purpose so that even if his assignment changes you don't feel like you have it's it's really different person entirely okay um another thing is you must see his potential you must what see his potential you know how you see people who come for all these reality tv shows that cannot sing but think that they can sing because they are family has encouraged them that they can sing they were just like them but they didn't want them to feel bad you must see his potential don't be like the family members of those people who go to embarrass themselves on american idol if you're with somebody who says you know i believe that i'm going to be an artist i'm going to be the greatest artist on the earth objectively you must look at it and say as an artist is this person good like i love you but as an artist are you good and you must be, even if the person is not yet successful yet, you must be able to see that potential to see, okay, you're actually going to do well as an artist. If that person will not do well as an artist, you need to be able to come up front and say, I think you should improve while doing something else. Do you understand? So, on one hand, you want to support this guy's dream. On the other hand, you want to be honest so that if he needs to find another dream, he can find it. So it's a different thing if somebody is good at something but hasn't caught his big break yet. But when you can't even see the potential, when the person is not even good at this thing, you need to be honest with them. And I'm not just saying it's like you should be honest with them so that you can cash out in the future. Do you understand? I'm saying that you should be honest with them for that person's sake and for the sake of the relationship. Do you understand? So if you know if you if you are aware of the capacity of this person that you love cheer them on be their best cheerleader if you're aware that they need to improve let them improve do you understand but you must see the potential of that person you must believe in their dream like nobody else like i remember my husband telling me one time thank you for believing in me when there wasn't anything to believe in and honestly i couldn't remember the time that there wasn't anything to believe in because even when I saw this guy speaking to four people while we were undergraduates, I knew I could see that this person was going to speak to thousands of people all across the world about the gospel of Jesus. I could see it. Do you understand? So there's, there's a kind of faith. I don't know if I would really call it blind faith. Do you understand? But just ha- having an opinion of this person that is beyond what other people can see. If you are going to date Mr. Potential, you must believe in his potential you must see the potential both objectively and you must be committed to it subjectively do you understand it's very very important if if you truly believe that this person 
can make it as a, as a as a pro ball player do you understand objectively how well is he doing and then subjectively how much do you believe in him that is so important because it never occurred to me and then people will tell me ah, this one i remember somebody because my husband has a very very young group and so one time we entered a bike together and the bike i was just driving somehow and my husband was at the back of the bike and i told the, the bike i said please as you're saying this guy this guy is my husband do um he's my fiance we're going to get married so please don't enjoy him and so the bike guy waited because he had picked us up in the night and so he waited and got to where he dropped us where we alighted from the bike and said ah is it this small boy you are calling your husband and it really got to me because I was like, do you know who this guy is? Like, in my mind, like, do you know who he is? Like, you may look at him like he doesn't have money now, or you haven't heard him speak. But if you if you should open his mouth to, to talk, you just know that this is one of the most brilliant people and finest Bible teachers in the world. And he's always looked at with me. Has he improved over the years? Yes. Have there been more opportunities? Yes. But even at that time, I could see the potential. Like, nobody had to convince me. That I wasn't making the perfect choice in choosing this person. Do you understand? Another thing you must see is the hustle. You must see the hustle. See, there are some people that are dating potential. They are sponsoring all his needs. They are spending all their money on him. There's nothing wrong with putting your money where your love is. But you must be wise too. Do you understand? You must be wise. They are sponsoring all his needs. And this person is just actually lazy. He said, oh, well, I want to be a musician. Even if you want to be a musician, there's a lot of work involved. How much work is this person putting into their dream? Are you just the one carrying them on your head saying, ah, you didn't go to the studio today, you are sleeping at home? No, 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 you don't want that kind of person. You want somebody who is self-motivated, somebody whose hustle you can see. Do you understand? When my husband um, and I got, first got married, he was in full-time, when, when he wanted to get married, he was in full-time ministry. But we realized that... <laughs> We were even the ones trying to put our money into the ministry. Do you get it? Couldn't, uh, even though the work was growing, the work couldn't support a, a full time pastor at that time. And so he took a part time job so that he could support us as a family. Do you get that hustle is very important. You don't just say, oh, well, even, even if God has called you into ministry and ministry cannot yet support you, what are you doing to put food on the table for your family or would be family? And then the, host, the, the the vision you have, the area in which you claim to have potential, how much work are you putting into it? See, eh, there's n- almost nothing as bad as being with somebody who is not self-motivated. Do you understand? Some guys are more laid back than some others. So not everybody is, I'm going to do this, blah, blah. But you must see genuine hard work and commitment to what that area he feels he has potential in do you understand so you shouldn't be the one begging him to do something with his life a responsible man knows that he should do something responsible with his life you don't have to marry a rich man but please don't marry a lazy one marry a hard-working guy regardless of the field he's chosen you must see the sweat i said here choose the sweat of a man who is working towards his dream over the lazy dude with an entitlement mentality do you understand? Like, oh, I have a rich dad. My dad didn't give me money. See, where your life is going to, you cannot be having discussion of my father will not give me money. You want somebody who is driven and self motivated and hard working. Whatever he claims he has potential in, you must see effort, improvement, work in that area. Okay? Another thing is what I call the responsible line, which is what I talked about briefly when I said you must see hustle. So if you guys want to get married, um, I think that even if the potential or the dream cannot yet support you guys yet, what is he doing? What responsible steps is he taking? Like I told you, my husband took a part-time job and worked that for a while until things got more comfortable. But what responsible step is he taking to ensure that he makes life better for the family you guys hope to have? Do you understand? So that's very, 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 very important. That responsible line. You don't just say, oh, well, I'm an artist. None of my paintings have sold. So I guess you just have to marry and live off your salary alone. Or just have to marry and be living in my parents' house. Because really, none of my paintings have sold. My, my music has not picked up. What else can you do to bring finances in? As a woman, too, of course, you know that you should also be financially responsible. Do you understand? what? 
I think no matter how small, you should be with somebody who at least has a sense of provision for his family. So that even if the dream hustle is not paying yet, what other hustle, what other legitimate hustle can he do by the side? I said that many families are worried that you have Mr. Potential because they feel you will still be dependent on, on, on them or Mr. Potential will be dependent on you. So you must take proactive steps to ensure that that's not the case. So we didn't officially bring up a wedding date with my family that's my husband and I until we were sure, or we were with his family until we were sure that we had enough money to pay for our first house rent. And we saved for like two years for that first house rent. But you don't want to give people the idea that this person is just irresponsible and you two you are irresponsible and so we are just children playing. So especially when you are planning to get married, there should be a plan. Do you understand? You don't just go and meet your, your parents. Both of you are still living with them. You don't have money for us and you must get married. Uh -uh. How now? And then that's the reason why they will say no. Because they feel you guys are not yet ready. So you must show through your actions that you are ready for marriage. Another thing I will say is be content. Be content. You are dating Mr. Potential. You believe in this guy. This guy has a dream. He's working towards putting his dream. He can't buy some things for you yet. But that is more than okay. Be content. Even now as a married woman, five years into marriage, there are some things I would not ask my husband for because I know he can't afford it. There are some things I would not buy even if I had the money because I know we need money for more important things. We're raising two kids in 2019. It's a very expensive world out there. So contentment is so important. Bible says that godliness with contentment is great gain. You don't have to have the newest phone. You don't have to buy a Shelby for every party. You don't have to have the most expensive of all things. So contentment is so important, especially when you know that you both are working towards a dream. Do you understand? Don't don't be the one to ask for the capital of your spouse's or your boyfriend's business just to buy shoe. Don't 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 be like that. Do you understand? Instead, find out how you can invest in the life of this guy. If he's doing something worthwhile and he's a responsible guy, there's nothing wrong with your money being in it. Do you understand? I believe it's somebody that also supports you. But contentment is so important. You don't have to buy everything that looks good. A time is going to come by God's grace when you can afford all those things. But for now, you are building a future. Do you understand? So if you have Mr. Potential, contentment is so important. The first car we had, I was even surprised we even had a car. <laughs> Thankfully, my mother in law gave us a car, her old car, and it really helped. Oh my god. Because I, really thought, I thought that when I married, I didn't even know that when I married my husband, we would even have a car. So it was even, I was even thankful that at least we had a car. Though the car was ministry car, meeting car, everything car. It was where we used to keep our equipment. It was a Sienna equipment car. It was shot. Every, the car was just. Our first car, and then there was time the car used to spoil in the same place. It was in that same spot like three times. In fact, after the first time, I jokingly said our car always spoils here. Well, I hope it's not spoils here. And I was laughing. And as I was laughing, the car actually stopped there. And I came, I was even pregnant then with my first daughter. I came down with, I think, my husband didn't allow me to push, or that wanted to push. But he pushed, and life went on. So, contentment is so important. If you are with somebody who is building something, you can't afford to just be spending all the money needed for building. You must learn to be content. That is so, so important. All right. Something else I will also mention is honor. Honor. It doesn't, it, there was a time. Most one day, we didn't even have a church yet, but he was already pastor in the ministry. I called him pastor. People were like, you're calling your boyfriend pastor. Yes, I will call him pastor because I want other people to call him pastor. So that level of honor, especially in the eyes of your family members, because your family members are watching when you relate to this person. If I just come up and say, ah, Ima, Emmanuel, come here. What are you doing? That's how they will talk to him. But when I treat him from a place of honor, what happens is that my friends, my family also treat him from that same place of honor. See, let me tell you, people will carry your beloved the way you carry him. They might speak badly about him and say, ah, like somebody told me one time, say that your husband doesn't even have money safe. And I say, ah, is he begging you? I, my mother, like, is he begging you for food? <laughs> so the way you carry that person is the way your family members are going to carry that person. If you are ashamed of that person, it's going to be obvious. If you don't have respect for that person, it's also going to be obvious. So you must honor Mr. Potential for the man that he is, for 
for when you see him through through the eyes of God as somebody who God has put to be the leader of your relationship, it doesn't matter how much he has in his bank account or how much people think he has achieved his life. If he's a responsible man who loves the Lord, who loves you, he deserves to be honored. Do you understand? I'm not saying that when a guy is not treating you well and you're dating him, you will not start pretending and buying things for yourself and saying, see what's he bought for me. That's not what I'm saying. But if you are with a good guy, you make sure you honor him both in public and in private. Okay? When people see me, for example, especially my husband has added some weight now, but he used to be quite slim before. <laughs> and people say, ah, your husband is a small boy. And like, one, one time, one individual told me that. I said, ah, is he, is he the one taking care of you? Is he the father of your children? Why, is, why, why will you call my husband a small boy? Somebody that is taking care of a family, that honors me, that loves me. How is he a small boy? You that you are a big man. What have you done with your life? <laughs> Sorry, I'm very, very personal when it comes to my husband. Very, very personal. So I don't, especially if, if you claim to be close to me, you have to honor my husband. If you don't honor my husband, we can't be friends. That's just the truth. If we are family, I will just be giving you space if you don't honor my husband. So that honor is also very, very important. Be sure to put that person, put your, your best foot forward when presenting that person to your family. But if it's somebody that's it's not responsible. Stop deceiving yourself. This, when it all comes down to it, if you are presenting an irresponsible guy as responsible just for appearances' sake, you are deceiving yourself because you are the one that will still marry him and still reap the fruits of his irresponsibility. But if you are with a responsible guy, honor him. If the guy is not responsible, end it. It's a dating relationship. Thank you very much. Yeah. Another thing is you want to be with somebody who also sees your potential. Ladies. You want to be with somebody who also sees your potential. I've heard girls say they don't want to build a guy from scratch because they've seen guys that you build them from scratch and they won't even let you do anything of your own or be anything for yourself. See, that's not true. What what the issue there is not that you build to that person from scratch, is that at the fundamental level that person has a problem. So you want to be with somebody who also supports your dreams and your vision. I talk about this in my video, I'm more educated than my boyfriend. I talk about this a little there. You want to be with somebody who also sees your potential. Somebody who is also working towards making your own dreams a reality. So that the relationship is not just all about him, all about his dreams. Do you understand? So you want to make sure that this person always encourages you. Hmm. I remember before I finally um, started doing ministry full time. For a while I was just doing my job. I knew I had potential but I was just doing my job, being a mom. My husband said, you have, you have a ministry. There's more to you than just sometimes being in church on Sunday or doing administrative work. There's more to you. It was he and all of my pastors that encouraged me to join Instagram, that encouraged me to um, start hold my first email program. You want to be with somebody who pushes you to fulfill potential. Somebody who doesn't think that by letting your own light shine, his own will just disappear. Of course, as a woman, you always have to use wisdom, do you understand? But you, want to, you don't want to be with somebody who feels that the more you shine, the less important he is. Or somebody who is threatened by your success. Do you understand? And I'm not talking about ladies who, because you're successful, begin to rub it in the guy's face and then now say he's threatened by their success. But you want to be somebody who you want to be with somebody who objectively believes in your dreams, believes in your vision, believes in your own potential, and is actively involved in seeing that come to pass. If Mr. Potential is all about himself. Please run for your dear life. Okay. Another thing I'm gonna say here is if you are with Mr. Potential, invest. Invest in your man. Invest. I'm not saying you should live your entire life for him, but invest. Invest your encouragement. Invest your words. Invest your time. If possible, invest your money. If you are with somebody trustworthy, there's nothing wrong supporting them financially to a certain extent, especially if all the other parameters I mentioned are in place. Do you understand? I think that if you guys are planning on getting married, I think you guys should have irregular source of income, by the way. I mentioned that earlier. But invest. Invest in this person. And don't invest because you want to cash out one day. Invest because you love this person. And that's the reason why I always advise people to date intelligently. So that you are, you, are, you are investing with your eyes open. So that you don't give everything you have to somebody who is not worthy of it. Do you understand? So if you are investing, bear in mind all the other things I've tried to teach you guys on this YouTube channel. A.K.A. how to choose a life power. How, 
a life partner or how not to choose a life partner but if you are with somebody invest invest your audience invest your words help this person publicize what they are doing don't be ashamed of them because they are starting small don't be like job's wife do you understand so even if your mr person is starting small if you love this person then truly be there for them do you understand don't just say i'm just managing you i'm just managing you if you're just managing them nobody's begging you to stay in the relationship thank you very much and if i mean person shall invest in him do you understand if you have somebody who who at the core is an amazing man like my husband be there for them do you understand and and, and it doesn't mean that you're not going to have challenges because you have mr potential do you understand but just invest in them invest in the relationship do you understand and 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 don't don't see i've learned not to build my life based on what people will say do you understand there are times when you are start, you are just starting out something and nobody believes in you and then the thing now becomes successful and everybody says oh is it was it actually a good idea in the first place and it's the same thing with relationships sometimes you're with a guy who may not have it all together financially not have it all together, not have it all together yeah. i mean financially or with his dream or his vision but you can see the potential don't be ashamed to invest in him don't be ashamed to tell people about him be proud of him do you understand and when the thing does does blow up other people are going to come on board but because you've always known that this person was going to be successful anyway it really wouldn't matter do you understand but at the core like i said you are dating the person not the potential so apart from potential is this person responsible does this person love the lord is this person committed to you let all those parameters be in place don't just be all about self-sacrifice and say i just want to be there for him and you're like, but this guy is not responsible. Like, I just want to be there for him. He's been so abandoned in his life. Don't need anybody out of pity. Don't need anybody because you simply believe in their dream. You must also believe in them too. And they must also believe in you. Thank you for taking time out to watch this video. Be sure to subscribe. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you have any questions you want me to answer, just put it in the comment section. I'll try and respond during my subsequent videos. <laughs> Have a lovely, lovely day and God bless you.